I, I'm going to talk a little bit about some work with business models, some work with uh, different kinds of content, different ways to deliver it, different audiences, um, how things can be diversified a little bit to provide a slightly more stable base for a worldwide foundation uh, for games. I hope people don't just listen, but start thinking of the of the, the opportunities being presented as opportunities. You know, these are things that uh, the, the the ideas being presented on stage are in some ways only a very small snapshot of what could be done. And what I'm hoping is that the audience will hear these ideas and start coming up with their own solutions, or maybe they'll hear something in a present. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll notice something's missing from the presentation, and then they'll look into it and realize. No one's addressed this yet, and that's a new opportunity for, 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 for them. So I encourage everyone at a, a conference like this to listen with a critical ear and you know, to say, what are they not telling us? What are they skipping over? Um, what sort of uh, opportunities might be for a new company mm -hmm. or for a, a, a new group of, of, of companies to go into and uh, provide a new solution for the world? Now we are seeing some significant disruption to the game industry in terms of this traditional business model. Some of that's coming from technology and technology adoption such as the availability of wireless broadband in a lot of urban areas. Um, we're still seeing game development being a pretty segregated environment. We have some large companies uh, say establishing studios in other parts of the world so that they can uh, take advantage of cheaper development costs mm -hmm. but not necessarily to take advantage of access to different audiences. Um, what I would like to see is um, a lot more international collaboration between studios to develop new kinds of content that could not necessarily have been developed by any one studio mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just a cost reduction uh, process. Um, but we are seeing um, a much broader base of players uh, from different age groups, different genders, different ethnicities, and from different countries, uh, all engaging with each other. And a lot of that comes from the fact that we have networks now that allow us to deploy games across many different countries at the same time. And those same networks allow uh, players to communicate with each other. So they share information about new games coming out, uh, strategies, um, and uh, and sometimes the games themselves haven't changed all that much, but the way how people decide that they're going to engage and play them has changed, has changed a lot. So that's really exciting. I can tell you what I hope to see. And what I hope to see is a lot of more people using games as a means of communicating with somebody else. I'd like to see a lot more people making games, not necessarily very high-tech, complicated games. I'm talking about, I want to see kids, I want to see adults, I want to see senior citizens thinking about games as a means of communicating with somebody else. Um, of course, that's a big opportunity for companies to do that too. <laughs>